one of the issues I really keep banging on about because I, I think it's really important and you, you write about this as well which is climate change and the way it's the, the way it's become this kind of it dominates economic and social policy uh, and yeah, yet I, I, see, I see the parallel um, principally I, what's interesting to me is that in this I am very much on the side of hard science yeah and I'm not a scientist, I don't claim to be a scientist, but I think I could recognize it when I see it. And what hard science is, and I'm very much a Karl Popper person on this, hard science yeah. is about real experimentation. The, the, the best test of, of, of any kind of scientific proposition is obviously the, its, its ability to predict. But otherwise, experiment which, uh, which can be repeated, uh, testable, falsifiable propositions, uh, which anybody can examine and which at some point or other could be overthrown by future, future research, that's real science. An awful lot of stuff now passes for science which is politicized and which doesn't pass the proper tests. And I'm even told by people that Popper is now discredited and outdated and that his, and that his philosophy of science is no longer to be taken seriously. This is fascinating to me. We're moving, oddly enough, at a time when we know more scientifically than we ever have had, when science has probably got more resources devoted to it than ever before. We're moving into an almost post-scientific age where ideology is taking over again. I've mentioned this on, a, on another podcast. Are you familiar with the concept of post-normal science? I have to say that I am not. But just as just as literature and the arts went through a post-modernist phase, so unfortunately, science, which you would think would be um, inimical to, to to that kind of worldview, well, you would, as you? Yes. because after all, it's about what what was it was it. Darwin, I think, said that that that, 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 a, that a scientist needs a heart of ice. It's just about what is. It's it, yeah, you can't. Yes, you you, ha you cannot have illusions in it. You have to, and you can't. You know, even if even if the work that you're you're looking at, which turns out to be false, is the work of your great friend, and even if you even if you strongly dislike the results which are coming up yeah. from your experimentation, you have to. If you were a proper scientist, you have to stick by what the experiment shows. Exactly. I would have thought that was that there isn't any other, any other possible approach. It's not even science, is it? Do, uh, I, the, uh, to, to, to paraphrase, to, to misquote Ben Shapiro, science doesn't care about your feelings. No. And yet we seem to be... I've had this too, by the way. I've, I've, I've invoked Popper thinking that, well, that's the end of the argument. Yeah, quite. But and, it, and it I, isn't anymore. No, I've been challenged. The, the idea that science now, it, it was invented, post-normal science was invented by a guy called Jerry Ravitz, uh, who wrote an influential essay on it. And, and it, it essentially is the, sci the science that we see in the climate change debate, which is that it is driven not by the, the evidence, but on what is desirable, a desirable outcome. Well, before we know where we are, the sun will be going around the earth again, though, won't it? Well, Exactly. We fought, why did we fight for all these things, to throw them away in the early 21st century? I mean, century? the point about Galileo is not the wickedness of the, of the, of the Pope, though that he was wicked. The point about Galileo is that truth was subjected to dogma. Yeah. So, I... So who's Galileo now, and who's the other, and who's the other guy? It seems to me to be, worth, to be worth asking. One of my... One of, my, the, 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 one of the things I, I'm often saying, because it just... I, I, I'm, I'm shocked and horrified that this, this should have happened. When I was a young man, I really thought that the establishment was, you know, motivated, well motivated, trying to do the right thing, that scientists did actual science, um, that policy would be based on evidence and so on. And yet here I am in 2020, and I find that the, mad, the lunatics have taken over the asylum. What, what happened? I think something did happen because I think it was to some extent true uh, in, in post-war Britain, that as, as I remember it, up to certainly the middle 60s, that the country was generally in the hands of, a, of an elite which was more or less rational and more or less concerned with uh, the, the good of the country, the immediate measurable good of the country as its prime purpose, and government was, was, was pretty sensibly based on that. Uh, I think that the... The, the arrival of a new dogma of idealistic reform and also I have to say the combination of that with what appears to me to be the dis destruction of old-fashioned rigorous education have left us in a, in, in a very different state. 
I think you know, you look I'm from society. I, I, I wrote an elegy for Didcot, a power station the other week, a coal-fired power station, yeah. which I remember being built in the 1960s uh, near Oxford, where I've lived for most of my life. And and it's now been destroyed. And not me. It, it, it wasn't just shut down, but it was actually blown up. So there's no possibility of reopening it, yeah. even though it was in good working order. It could continue to produce power because it burns coal, and that is now dogmatically unacceptable. Mm. And the whole, the, the, it's a very carefully devised energy policy existed in those times. And also, we had at that stage an extremely advanced and uh, and rather successful nuclear power sector, which was uh, which was a very considerable concentration of knowledge, skill, and experience, which had been cast to the winds, I have to say, uh, by the Thatcher state, which, uh, for for its own dogmatic anti-nationalisation reasons, dis- d- destroyed our capacity to build our own nuclear power stations. So now, when we want to build new ones, we can't. We have to hire the Chinese to do something which we used to be able to do ourselves. Mm-hmm. Ludicrous things, which are, which have happened because of various uh, dogmatic. Uh, swings and swerves and zigs and zags. It, it, it was said of the British Communist Party's uh, policy on the nuclear bomb that it zigged when it should have zagged and zagged when it should have zigged. And I think that's pretty much a description of most of the things that British governments have been doing really since the 1960s. And I do very much link that uh, to the destruction of rigorous education, which I witnessed. Uh, which I was I, I I was one of the last people to ed- to be educated in, in secondary school according to up to O level as it then was, according to fairly stern standards which previously existed and they vanished. I watched them vanish. It's it's so bad that people sometimes mistake me for an intellectual. And it, it, this is how ludicrous it is. How how bad our education system is now. But who is doing this stuff? I mean, is it is it some kind of massive it's conspiracy? A, it, it 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 was never. I tried, when I wrote my first book, The Abolition of Britain, back in the late 1990s, beginning of the Blair era, I thought that maybe this thing could be traced to some sort of deliberate attempt to overthrow everything. But I've, I've abandoned that now. I th- single causes are, are never there. What it is mostly, and almost all of our problems are mostly, is that they, they follow the collapse of the previous set of beliefs. They follow the collapse of Christianity, they follow the collapse of old-fashioned uh, normal English British patriotism, and those having gone, all kinds of other ideas have rushed into the vacuum left uh, where where they used to be. It's, it's it's almost just like a garden. You can for many years someone can can cultivate the garden and it's an orderly thing of beauty, and the moment that person goes away and dies and ceases to do it, it's amazing how quickly weeds of all kinds flourish in what were previously beautifully cultivated parts of the garden. And that, I think, is is very much what's happened.